Hi everybody and welcome to today's little play session. I thought today we'd look at the um, bocker technique um, and this is a lovely technique. Really, you know I love making backgrounds so this is just one of those lovely techniques for making backgrounds. It's actually um, used in photography and um, it's really used because it makes um, an area look visually appealing. Um, once I mean, I'd Google it, have a look. Um, I'll just give you a quick oversight. Um, I think they use a lens. And what it does is it almost gives a, a, a fuzzy appeal. So on this card here, you can see these areas here. Once you notice it, you'll probably start looking. It's used a lot in adverts. And it, um, as I say, it's just to make an area look visually appealing. Now, when I looked it up, it actually comes from the Japanese language and it means to blur. And I assume that's because these areas are almost soft focused and blurred. But obviously, you know what, what we're like in the uh, craft industry. And it's just a lovely way of making a background. So I've just done a, a couple of little cards here just to show you various things. I mean, for me, I love having days where I make lots of backgrounds and then just stamp them up. However, so I'll make a start and show you what we're going to do. Pop these to one side and I'm just using um, the card I'm using. This is a, a pink frog card and um, it's just a nice smooth um, blend uh, for, for blending, for adding ink. Now I'm going to use some Distress Oxide inks and I've just gone for a, a couple of colours. So I've gone for a crushed olive and a spice marmalade. Um, I tend to use orange a lot, it's just one of the colours I go for. Really, it um, doesn't matter what colours you use. Um, sometimes, because we're going to add white ink, quite often the darker colours do show the white ink up well. Now I'm just randomly going to blend these inks. I'm using a, a 5 by 7 piece of card, just because this is um, just the piece of card I had available. I mean, as I say, at home, I mean depending where you're watching this from and I have to say thank you to uh, the recent followers that have started following me on YouTube I'm absolutely thrilled and it is lovely to read your messages and read where you're all from so here in Cheshire in the UK we're just slowly starting to lift the lockdown um, but I know quite a few I tend to run or I did run um, regular workshops and now I've started doing them online um, and a lot of the ladies, the crafters, the ladies and gentlemen are stuck at home in lockdown so I do find obviously if you're a little bit bored or um, you don't know what to do when you go in your craft room making backgrounds I find is a lovely way to spend your time and also if you feel your mojo's gone it almost gets you you know pick a background uh, especially something like this technique have a go at it do a couple of backgrounds with different colors have a play and um, what you'll find is by the time you've stamped a couple of them up your mojo it's amazing it suddenly returns and you'll start thinking oh actually I've got this other stamp I could use on that and oh that would make a lovely background for such and such a uh, die cut and all of a sudden it's lovely because as I say you know your mojo will instantly come back now if you notice this is a great way as well for practicing your blending i always blend circular motions to put the ink on my blending tool and i never ever wash the sponges on my blending tool i find the ink they have on really seasons them well now your blending doesn't have to be perfect for this at all but it is a great way of practicing your blending what I like to do is, so I've got some of the green and the orange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more orange just in the corners. Just on these corners, it almost darken it off a little. And then what I'm actually going to do is I've got um, fossilised amber, which is almost a muddy sort of yellow. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that just in the middle, just to alter that colour tone a little. Again, not essential. I'm going to pop the lid on that, pop the lid on my orange. I'm afraid I am, as you know, I try to be tidy a crafter as possible. Um, so it's lids on all the time. And I'm just going to darken the edges of where my green is. Again, not a lot of thought, just a, a nice quick background. Now I will just clean this up, because like I say, if I don't, I'll get it on my hands and then it'll end up on my work. And for me, the tidier I craft, the less chance I've got of spoiling something. Now the next bit, we're actually going to make these um, circles of, of light. 
and for that you can either I mean I have some um, all and create stencils so I'm going to use those what you need is circles what you can do if you have acetate and you have circular punches punch some holes out of circles also quite often we do use except I seem to have lost it we, we do use we cut circles of acetate out to make our moon masks what you could use is the waist where you've cut it from if you've got dies die cut yourself a piece of acetate or a piece of card even with a couple of different size circles in that's what I would recommend and put it to one side and then you've got it there to use again and again as I say I'm just using I've got a couple of stencils here and I've just masked off with low tack tape a couple of the, the circular areas and what we need now is a white ink. Now, I when I looked in my stash, I had various white inks. I had some little of the uh, teardrop brilliance inks and I had uh, my stays on pigment ink. But the one I found for me gave me my best results is I've got an archival brilliance, moonlight white. And that, um, when I tried this, gave me a good result. And I'm just using a makeup sponge. Now, the one thing you will find, because we're going to go on to our oxide we will pick a little bit of oxide up on the sponge so I'm just going to use a little corner of my ink pad here um because it will get slightly contaminated now with this we're just going to add various circles in the background and what I would say try and remember with this less is more so if I bring a finished one in if I show you don't overdo it with your circles now a little bit like when I'm doing the workshops and I tell ladies we don't want a pizza so we don't want this covered in you know ham pineapple whatever anchovies no we're just going remember that less is more to get a good result and also if I bring the other one in as well we do want some almost fa faded and some brighter of our little circles so I would recommend the larger ones if we have faded really just because for me it uses less ink it's a larger area so I'm better doing that as my faded and having my little ones as, as my more focal so I'm going to start dabbing some ink and we'll just go in here and I'm just going to dab and again, for me, I find a dabbing motion works well. You can use um, one of your blending tools or you could use a smoothie. For me, mine are all, I've already got colour on. So I found it easier to just use one of these makeup sponges. Now I've dabbed and then I'm just going to go around in a circular motion. And again, I'm not going to lift the stencil up straight away. I'm just going to lift a corner and see. Yeah, now for me, that's just enough. Can you see? That's enough colour there. So I'm just going to add another one and I'm going to go over here. So I think we'll just have two of these larger ones. As I say, it's really important. Remember, less is more. Now, if you notice, yes, I am getting lines here. But don't worry, because literally that's why I just go round. I mean, it's quite quick to do, really. Lift up, yeah. I'm happy with that. Shall we have a third? And this one we'll just have coming off the page here, I think. Again, you don't want them all. You want it to look as though this is from a larger piece. Now, I dare say, if there's some of you out there, I am not a photographer. And um, so if there are any photographers out there and I'm doing this wrong um, or I've given the wrong information, I do apologise. I just Googled, well, had a look. We can't say that, can we? I just looked on one of those search engines and gathered some information so um, it is my sort of homage to your photography technique. I'm happy with those three. I'm going to pop that stencil to one side and bring in this one. It's a bit warm here today, so my low tack tape's drying a bit. Also, I find if I go with a, if you're using a stencil, I'd go for ones in the middle. If you go for ones near the end, you may get a line here. You know, when we get a bit enthusiastic and get ink on the edge. So I would always go for your circles. And if you're going to punch them, try and punch them far in the card as you can. So we want a few. And it's nice if you, let's have this one overlapping. We don't want them all overlapping, but let's just have a couple. And this one I want slightly brighter. So I'm almost going to dab a bit more vigorously. Like I say, I could have a piece of copy paper and dab it off and take the colour. But to be honest, for what little bit's actually going on my ink pad, I don't mind at all. And again, have a little look. Yes. You see how we're building that up? I like that. You can just go around with your finger to almost just fuzzy that. When it gets deeper, you see how that just now fuzzes that edge? I like that effect. 
right so let's just it's all about placing we'll pop one here do try different colors different color combinations and it's such a lovely technique and as i say if you are struggling at the minute do give this a go i like that and i'm thinking a couple of little ones like i say we're not going to overdo it we just want a few different intensities I want this one a bit brighter yeah and again i'm just going to smooth that so it gives that almost that fuzzy focus a couple more little ones just a couple i'm going to go a little one here Yeah, and again, can you see how it's just built up? So if I just, if you get any thicker areas, just with your finger, and that makes it nice and fuzzy. Oh, I like that. I'm just a couple up here. And again, fuzzy that edge. And on here, there are a couple of really tiny ones. And again, I haven't masked them off because I quite like these odd. They almost look like they're starbursts. When you, you look this up, you'll, you'll see what I mean. The odd bits of light that come through. I like that. So I'm just going to add a tiny few of these. Not many yet. Now, I just seem to have a bit of a... If I put something, I think I want it to join together. You see, you could go there, but to me, that's we're starting to create that pizza. So I want an area without any. So I'm just going to add one of the little ones. See if I can just get some random ones in there. Right, just to join that area together. And I'm happy with that. I'm going to stop there. So I'll pop the lid on that. So that's my bucket effect. And I would leave that there. I don't want to do any more to that. But what I will do is I'll just quickly stamp it up for you to give you an idea of what you can do now one of you ladies i'm sorry i can't remember your name asked what's under here this is just some copy of paper and it's a stamping magazine purely for me the table i have at home and again when i, I travel around doing workshops i find it's more forgiving to just have this it seems to have a bit more cushioning and it helps with my stamping now today i'm going to i, I love this lovely stamp it's called let me have a look uh, wildflowers and again, I'm just going to do some silhouette stamping. And if I look, I'm thinking, I'll tell you what, I think if we turn, if we do that one this way today, yep. Yeah. Now, I'm, what shall we go? I think I might use a green for this. Let's have a look. Do you know what? Let's try it. Let's see. I think we could do green and black, you see. Now, I like to stamp from the side. It's just the way for me. I just find it easier and again you've got to make it easy for yourself you've got to enjoy what you're doing so it's a silhouette so I'll give it a minute press down oh, I like that and then I think we'll do some black as well so this color is oh shady lane which in my head I do call shady lady so we'll do a few of these and again when you're doing things like grasses i want this to look like a wildflower garden don't have them at the same height and don't have them all going at the same angle remember they're not soldiers lined up we want it to look as natural as possible so i'll just do a bit of second generation there so what i'm wanting to do is give a bit of depth with this so obviously the first and second generation just helps to give that bit of depth I just want to balance, I just want one on that side. don't want it symmetrical, but I just want to balance the whole design. So I'm, I'm, if I turn that round, you see what I'm going for. Now I have got another stamp I want to bring in. And this one is called Field Grass. And what I'm thinking is my black, where's my black? Excuse, oh, excuse my arm. I'm doing that thing of, honestly, my craft table, stuff everywhere. Now, what I'm thinking is this field grass will give me some just some delicate. I like that. I just want it to look like it's blowing in the wind. That nice delicate. Because obviously I don't want to take away from we've got this lovely bokeh effect or bokeh. Honestly, I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm afraid I don't speak Japanese, so. I dare say somebody one day will actually tell me how it's pronounced. Yeah. So what I'm thinking now 
is I love that and I'm thinking if I go back and just do a couple with the first one in the black let's check it's the black to get a good silhouette image and make a real focal point so if I go here so I'm hoping to create that depth just through using these couple of stamps a little bit of second generation and then I'm thinking here let's just go in that and I don't want it the same height do I so let's just go a bit taller there we go yeah I must admit I'm really happy with that what do you think should we just add just one more of that I'm thinking I don't want to overdo it but just that just in the breeze coming in there for me just finishes that off now that doesn't need a lot at all what I would do is she says oh my ruler I remember taking it into the kitchen last night oh well I would just black sharpie line round the edge to bring the black together a sentiment and just a tiny bit of foliage at the top so we've got this lovely vine stamp and I'm thinking just a little bit in the two colours and again we want to keep this shape so just a tiny bit at the top again first and second generation longer at the sides and I'm just going to add a tiny, we don't want a lot of this. So a little bit in the green. And then off on my copy of paper. And then into the black. Such a pretty little stamp this. Just going to wipe my block. It's got a bit of ink on it. think that is just again with this what I think would finish that off is a sentiment so let's have a look what I've got on my desk what have we got here what about this every dream begins with a wish now certainly when I do the workshops a lot of ladies worry now can you see I've actually caught there's a little bit of ink there where it was on the edge of my block. So I'm going to see if I can stamp over that. And you know what? If it doesn't work, a lot of ladies do worry about stamping directly on your work. So we'll just put that over there. Try and get it straight. If it doesn't work, I'll stamp it on a piece of card and I'll decoupage it. And nobody will ever know. So don't ever be worried about trying something. What I want to do is give you the confidence to try it. Give that a minute, yeah, there we go. So, that's my finished piece for you. And as I say, for me, I would just put a black Sharpie line out. I'll mat it on some black card. So I'll bring the original two in for you. So these are just to show you that Bokka technique. So I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoy. I'm not sure how I can get them all in shot. I'm very sorry. <laughs> so have fun. Enjoy it. It's a lovely little technique to try. Um, take care, everybody. Thanks for popping in and spending a few minutes with me. I've really enjoyed your company. And um, like I say, do look after yourselves. Thank you so much for joining me. Love and hugs. Bye.